Permanent. Uh, and what we try to do is base it roughly around to MA list of ecosystem services, but obviously for far too large, so it's been focused through to uh, narrowed them down. Uh, so in terms of provisioning services, we looked at wild food and non-food products. Uh, we didn't look at agriculture output, uh, commercial food products, because uh, we're very much looking at non-market values in this assessment. In terms of regulating services, we look at climate regulation and water regulating. And in terms of cultural services, we initially thought of breaking down into different elements of cultural services, but then we, through discussions, we decided to place them on the different elements of a UK Biodiversity Action Plan. So a sense of place is largely looking at cultural services linked to habitats, and then we also look at cultural services in terms of charismatic <coughs> species and the less charismatic species. Uh, in terms of choice experiment, let's kind of examine the choice task. Uh, you've got the baseline where the assumption there is that uh, funds for the biodiversity action plan we've removed and all the services would be declined and through discussions with scientists and review of paper we worked out what the impact on services would be. And scenarios A and B were based on one of three levels, either the decline or the current level of service provision or an enhancement where the biodiversity action plan would meet all its targets to protect biodiversity. So usual choice experiments, these are kind of experimentally designed, allocated. Uh, so based on that assessment, uh, the value of different services are here. So uh, under current scenario, uh, so what is currently being provided, uh, water regulation and climate regulation was highest, and the full implementation, so we enhanced the policy. Again, th these are the ecosystem services that are most valued. Uh, this, these values are in addition to that value, so uh, if you extend it, you will get more services. So that was the first element, results from a choice experiment, so that's based on the services. Then what we tried to do is identify how the broad habitats, so 19 broad habitats, delivered those services, and how the biodiversity policy uh, was directly contributing to service delivery. And to do that, we got a bunch of experts together, and then the weighting matrix where we got them to allocate services to different habitats and various methods. Uh, the kind of general output, uh, here's a sample. Uh, so what we've got here is different provisioning, regulating and cultural services. The total height of the bar is the level of services delivered on a kind of relative scale, not to one, by different habitats. So if you look at blanket bogs, they tend to deliver lots of regulating cultural services as is native woodlands, where if you look at grassland habitats, it might deliver some cultural services, but very little regulating. Uh, the first bar here is commercial food production, so uh, obviously arable fields have got large commercial food. So the total height of the bars relate to the level of services delivered when those, uh, the habitat action plans are fully implemented. The blue line here is what would be delivered if you removed any conservation policy. So that habitat would still deliver those services even though we didn't conserve it. And this red bar is what contribution this, the policy has for enhancing service delivery. So obviously different habitats deliver different levels of services. So we combine the two information uh, together and we get a graph like this. So this is a pound per hectare per year that different habitats have for service delivery. The blue lines are the current levels of service delivery under habitats, and the red lines are if we improve the level of protection, what extra services would be delivered. So the winners are things like blanket bogs, uh, moorland, so a lot of the heathland kind of habitats and woodland. And much of the drivers for these values are the climate change, the carbon storage, and water regulation. So these are the key drivers of services, and obviously I can break it down, and I can break it down by countries as well. So, in kind of conclusion of that, uh, we did a survey, uh, across, and we broke it down into 12 regions of the UK, so Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and nine regions of England, and it's very clear that people in different regions of the UK value different services and different habitats, and also the benefits across different habitats changed. Uh, also, the current levels of protection was valued higher than any future enhancement, but obviously the total value of future enhancement is greater than currently, but the marginal value is greater. 
and the habitats with the greatest valleys where things like blind bogs, native woodland, and so forth are so mostly driven by carbon storage. So there are two very different studies um, using different approaches to look at the value of ecosystem change in the future. I think in both studies, it's clear that there are still significant knowledge gaps, not only in the ecosystem science, so how habitats deliver services, but also in terms of economic values. Uh, so there's still huge information gaps, and it has to be taken with a, not a pinch of salt, but you, you need to be, there's lots of caveats to these surveys. Uh, it's also clear there's lots of temporal and spatial impacts, so you have to account for spatial variation and temporal variation when you're trying to do the assessments. Uh, you need to account for these non-market values, uh, as demonstrated by the NEA, the best solutions if you base it on market prices, like the market design is very different from one where we try and incorporate the non-market values. So it's a very important we try and capture and demonstrate these non-market values. Uh, and the final point is, uh, maybe for other countries, so in UK we're quite lucky, there's been lots of valuation studies, there's been lots of ecological work looking at uh, linking ecosystems to, service, uh, to habitats and so forth. And so there, we are able to do kind of benefits or value transfer or these meta-analysis. But in other countries, that's less the case. The case. So it may be that we do need to try and collect a lot more empirical evidence. And the UK BAP study is one way in which we might do that. It's not perfect, but what I think it's rigorous is in terms of being able to look at the values consistently across different habitats and different services. So at least we know that the relative values within that study is, is consistent. Okay, thanks very much.